Welcome to another edition of our Treatment of the International Sunday School Lesson. Today's lesson is entitled, Jesus Glorifies God. And it's taken from the book of John, 7th chapter, verses 14 through 24. And today's lesson is for September the 17th, 2023, fall quarter, lesson number 3. Now a little background information. A couple of things that are very important for us to understand in studying today's lesson. The first thing is, is that Jesus was from a very poor section of the Jewish community and that he was not from the higher status portion of the society. The other thing is, is that the Jewish people they had a class of professional teachers who were who learned their craft by a mentorship of going f- from a a teacher to a student and they s- spent a good bit of time studying that craft and like i said it was a mentorship And so, because Jesus had not went through that mentorship and was from that poor section of the society, uh, that has a lot of significance in today's lesson. Is it important for us to keep those two pieces of information in mind as we go to study today's lesson? John, 7th chapter, verses 14 and 15. About the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and began teaching. The Jews therefore marveled, saying, How is it that this man has, this, this man has learning when he has never studied? So we see how that the folks were amazed that Jesus knew these things, and that he had not went through the mentorship that a lot of their rabbis had went through. And this is often remarked throughout the Gospels uh, where people would say that. Uh, For example, Matthew 22 and 33, And when the crowd heard it, they were astonished at his teachings. And we see how that also happened Uh, with the disciples, uh, after the day of Pentecost, they, the people were amazed that they knew the things that they had, that they were unlearned men. They had not went through that educational uh, system that they had in place. And we need to uh, keep that in mind, too, You know, as people are called into the ministry, I have seen people uh, with virtually no training uh, preach some of the best sermons I've ever heard. It was because they were depending on God and listening to the Lord's leading. And we have something that I love, a couple of verses I love from the Old Testament from the book of Amos. In Amos, the seventh chapter Verses 14 and 15. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. But the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. And let me tell you something. As someone who has uh, been bivocational uh, all through my ministry that there's a strong place in the work of God for those of us who were uh, dressers of sycamore sycamore figs and herdsmen who the Lord calls into the ministry to do the work of the Lord and to Uh, drive a fork truck or uh, keep a shop or um, write 
programs and whatever we end up having to do and the Lord calls us in the ministry and when we get the opportunity to preach. And let me encourage people to that the Lord has called into the ministry to do that kind of thing. And there's a very strong place in the work of God for people who are not profession. It's not their profession. It's not what they do for a living. It's not how they uh, feed their why their feed their kids and provide housing for their family. It's not how they do that. But God calls them in the ministry, and that is a very important uh, thing to do to. Um, do exactly what God would have you to do. And there's a very meaningful place. They are some people uh, in the world who have a tendency to not listen to people who are in the ministry and they don't hold down a secular job. They are some folks who will not listen to a preacher who does not hold down a secular job. And that's a reality that we need to understand. And there is a very great place for people who hold down secular jobs and work in the ministry. John 7 and 16. So Jesus answered them, My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. And it's important for us to realize that the Almighty Son of God pointed people who were listening to Him to God the Father. And anybody who is in the ministry or giving the impression that they're in the ministry and all it's doing is pointing to themselves, that's extremely problematic because all of true ministry points people to the Lord Jesus Christ and is not centered on ourselves, is not centered on our benefit, is not centered on making us look like a big shot. It is to be pointing people to God. Okay? And John twelve forty eight through 50 says, The one who rejects me and does not receive my words has a judge. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment, what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I say, therefore, I say as the Father has told me. And that is the words of the Son of God. And those of us who are in the ministry, we need to really put our attention on sharing the word of of God. Not what we think, but what God says. And we see that's exactly what Jesus was saying, that he was saying what the Father has told him to say. That's what he was going to say. And we need to very strongly and very diligently Seek out what the Bible says, and that is what we share in our ministries. John seven, seventeen and 18. If anyone's will is to do God's will, he will know whether the teaching is from God or whether I am speaking on my own authority. The one who speaks on his own authority seeks his own glory. But the one who seeks the glory of him who sent him is true. And in him there is no falsehood. And that is again reinforcing how that 
Jesus was speaking under the authority of, the, of God the Father as he was in this world. He was not... He, he was saying what God the Father had sent him into this world to say. And those of us who are in the ministry, who are called to preach, who are called to spread the Word of God, that is exactly what the way we should be looking at it to the nth degree is to say what God would have us to say and to be speaking the Word of God and to seek out the Word of God and know what we need to be sharing. You know, the Apostle Peter said in 1 Peter 4, 10 and 11, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To Him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now notice how that Peter is emphasizing that as we as our churches work in its ministry that it glorifies God and does not glorify us it does not make us look like the big shot it glorifies God that is what we should be focusing on is making sure that we give the glory that we point the glory to God Almighty. John 7, 19 and 20. Has not Moses given you the law? Yet none of you keeps the law. Why do you seek to kill me? The crowd answered, You have a demon. Who is seeking to kill you? Now, as we read through the Gospels, we see multiple times where the people of that day, the rulers of that day, sought to kill Jesus multiple times. In fact, John eleven forty nine through 53 reads, But none of them, but one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all. Nor do you understand that it's better for you, for you that one man should die for the people, not that the whole nation should perish. He did not say this of his own accord, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation. And not for that nation only, but also to gather into one of the children of God who were scattered abroad. So from that day on, they made plans to put him to death. And that happened multiple times with multiple groups of them as they began to plot the death of Jesus. John seven twenty one and tw- through 23. Jesus answered them, I did one work, and you all marveled at, marvel at it. Moses gave you circumcision, not that it was from Moses, but from the fathers, and you circumcise a man on the Sabbath. If on the Sabbath a man receives circumcision, so that the law of Moses may not be broken, are you angry at, with me because on the Sabbath I made a man's whole body well? And we see here how that they were seeking to find a fault with Jesus. And when you see people who get jealous, who are seeking to destroy somebody, they will sit there and nitpick and 
make up all kinds of things to try to do them in. And you have to be very careful when you start seeing that happening. And let me tell you something. They were fault-finding with Jesus and worked up in their mind a false fault that they had worked up in their mind that was not really a sin at all, but they had already had it all worked up in their mind. So trust me, if people are going to find fault with you and they have it in their mind to do that, they are going to find a fault. And they're going to vilify you and talk about you and go on about everything. Because if they found fault with Jesus like they had done, they are going to find fault with you too. And we need to be strong and resist uh, that kind of thing. And if we see that kind of spirit coming up in the group that we're in, we need to resist that and to rebuke that. You see, that whole situation could have completely turned out different if there had been some of those groups in there that had looked around and said, you know, wait a minute now, this doesn't make sense. He hadn't done anything wrong. And we need to be careful about what we're doing. That could have that could have really changed that whole thing around. And we need to have that kind of mentality if the group that we're in is just going after somebody to attack them. And if it doesn't make sense what they're saying, we need to stand up for the truth. Okay? John seven twenty four. Do not judge by appearance, but judge with right judgment. And I think that's one of the most important parts of this uh, Sunday school lesson this week is for us not to judge by appearance. Let's see what Isaiah said about the Lord Jesus Christ. In Isaiah, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 4. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide or decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he will judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, and he shall kill the wicked. Righteous judgment. Don't judge by appearances. Let me tell you something. Now, I'm not going to go into which company it was, but I went to work for a company one time, and I had never met the owner of the company, who was a very rich man. But he was a little bit quirky, and he did not dress well, and oftentimes dressed as a, looked like a bum the way he dressed. And so we were having a Christmas party. And as I said, I had never met the owner of the company. And I went to the Christmas party. And I'm sitting there at the Christmas party and look over and I see somebody. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that isn't that sweet that they've got this poor homeless man in here for this, <laughs> for this Christmas party. That that's really sweet that they've done that. Come to find out the man was probably one of the most wealthiest men I've ever met in my life. <laughs> he was the guy who owned the company. And I was judging by appearances. And let me caution all of us 
not to judge by appearances. Because appearances can be deceiving. Now, in conclusion, you know, as I said just a few seconds ago, we should not be judging by appearances. Appearances can be so, so very deceiving. And there have been several very embarrassing times in my life where I have made assumptions and jumped to conclusions based on only appearances. And I am, the older I get, the more I am completely convinced that we should never, ever judge by appearances. The We should actually be praying for God to give us the wisdom to go through life and to make decisions based on the leadership of the Spirit of God and the truthfulness of God. Well, friends, good Lord willing, I'll be back with you next weekend.